the first step in deriving the spectroscopic term symbols for a particular electronic configuration is to determine the total number of microstates. So we can find the number of microstates, and we use the symbol omega for the number of microstates. It's equal to n factorial, where n, fact, n is the total number of possible electrons that we can fit into a series of orbitals, divided by e factorial, where e is the total number of electrons, and times h factorial, and h is the number of holes. Now, set up in such a way that the number of electrons plus the number of holes is equal to the number of possible positions. So we have that e plus h is equal to n. For our first example, we want to derive the spectroscopic term symbols for a P2 configuration. Now we recognize that in the uh, P orbitals, we have three P orbitals. Each can hold two electrons. So for a particular uh, orbital configuration, P2, n is equal to six. So our numerator will be six factorial. The total number of electrons E is equal to two. So we have two factorial. And then the number of holes, the number of empty spaces, the places where there could be an electron, but there isn't, is equal to four. So that gives us the four factorial as the final term in our denominator. Now we can use the properties of the factorial to figure out exactly how many microstates we have. We recognize that six factorial is six times five times four times three times two. Now it's also times one, but since multiplying by one doesn't change anything, there's never any point in writing out the times one part. You just we can save ourselves some, some writing. One thing which is helpful here is we recognize that four factorial, we can write that part first, and I'll write that in blue just to show it's a little different here. So we have our four times three times two. That's the four factorial part. And two factorial is two times one or two. I'm going to write that in red. And the reason for writing it this way, it shows a convenient method for simplifying expressions with factorials. We notice that the twos the threes and the fours will all cancel. So we're left with six times five divided by two, which is just equal to 15. This tells us that when we're deriving the spectroscopic term symbols for a P2 configuration, that we will need to derive 15 microstates. The nature of this formula is such that we must always get a whole number answer. If we do not get a whole number answer, that means that we've made some mistake in our computation and we want to go back and double check to do our calculation correctly. In order to make our computations easier to follow, we are going to derive the 15 microstates uh, in two batches so that we can look at each group separately. For the first group, we notice that in the p orbitals for any level, the three p orbitals are degenerate. And we can assign to each of these particular orbitals uh, a m sub l level. So for one of these orbitals, we can assign the value m sub l is minus one. For the ones in the center, the m sub l value is going to be zero, and the m sub l value for the right-hand side is going to be plus one. The reason that we do that is that if we have p orbitals, we recognize that this is consistent with an l value of one, and that by the rules of quantum mechanics, that the allowed values for any particular angular momentum level will go from, the m sub l values will go from minus l, 
up to plus L. So for the L equals 1, the P levels, the allowed values of M sub L are going to be minus 1, 0, and 1. And we just systematize putting M sub L minus 1 to the left, M sub L equals 0 in the center, and M sub L equals positive 1 to the right. And it will be a little clearer uh, in just a minute why we're going to the trouble of actually labeling these particular values. So now we want to put the electrons into the orbitals, but we're going to put them in in such a way that we satisfy the Pauli exclusion principle, by which that we can only put two electrons in one particular orbital if they have opposite spins. For the first set of microstates that we're going to look at, we're going to look at cases where the electrons are going to be um, with the same spins. So you can have electrons arranged this way. Now notice we couldn't put these two electrons in the same orbital because that would violate the Pauli principle. We can put the electron here and one there. Or we could also put in the center and one there. And we notice that these are all the possibilities for having two electrons with the same spin is parallel spins without violating the Pauli exclusion principle. Now similarly, just as we could have electrons pointing up, we could have the down electron. So let's work out essentially the same patterns that we have already, but just the down versions. So here they're both down, left and center. Then we could have down and down here. And last but not least, we could have the down and these are the only possibilities that we can have for P2 such that the electrons have parallel spins. Now, one of the convenient things about doing this is, now we notice that in each of these cases, for the first three electrons, we notice that since they have upspins, we generally assign a value of plus one half for an upspin. So we can compute this particular function, big M sub S. The way we get big M sub S is we add up all the little M sub S values. Now in this case, M sub S is equal to a half here, and M sub S is equal to a half there. So we get a total value of M sub S being equal to one. It's a positive one for these first three cases. Now we notice for the bottom three cases, again, big M sub S, we add up to the values of the small M sub S's, the M sub S's for each individual electron are minus one half. So therefore the overall M sub S value for these three microstates is going to be minus one. Okay. Now similarly, we can do the same sort of thing where we can compute the big M sub L values. And again, in this case, we add up the small M sub L values. So we're gonna put that in a column right alongside here of the big M sub L values. Here's where labeling the individual orbitals becomes very helpful because it reminds us the small m sub L values are minus one, zero, and one. So for the first example, we have an m sub L equals minus one and an m sub L equals zero. So that tells us that big m sub L for this particular case is going to be equal to minus one. Similarly, for this case, we have an M sub L minus one and an M sub L equal plus one. If we add those together, we get a value of zero. Similarly, for this particular case, we have M sub L equals zero, M sub L equal plus one. That gives us an M sub L value of big plus one. And if we continue, we, can, we get the same sorts of thing heading down for these three cases. Minus one plus zero is minus one. We have minus one plus one is equal to zero. And then we have zero and plus one is equal to plus one. Now just to make this a little neater here, let's just write in again the values of M sub S in a column next to the microstate so that we have that tabulated. So here's our values of big M sub S. And just to recap what we had done, so we notice since we have two up electrons, each up electron contributes plus one half. So the overall big M sub S is going to be plus one, plus one, 
plus one, because in each of those three cases, we have two up electrons. Then for this case, we have two down electrons. Each down electron contributes minus a half. So therefore, the m sub s value here is going to be minus one, minus one, minus one. So ultimately, what we have to do uh, as a first step in deriving spectroscopic term symbols is to write out all the microstates. And we've done six of those so far. And then we, for those particular microstates, we want to tabulate both the big M sub L and the big M sub S values. And it's nice to make a chart like this. And what we're going to do after we go through the next nine microstates is to make a table where we list these particular M sub L and M sub S values. And that's going to be key in the succeeding steps in deriving the spectroscopic term symbols. Now we are going to derive the remainder of the 15 microstates for the P2 system. Again, we're going to remind ourselves of the values of M sub L for individual orbitals are going to be minus one on the left, zero in the center, and plus one on the right hand side. And for these particular microstates, we're going to look at those states where we have opposite spins. So we're going to have one up spin and one down spin. And we're going to do this consistent with the Pauli exclusion principle. So we notice right away, one way we can do that is to, we can put two electrons in the same orbital if they have opposite spins, or paired spins we say sometimes, so we can do that. We do that. So those are the three combinations that are consistent with the Pauli principle. And then we can have Situations such as this, we have one up and then one down, one up and then one down. So now we put them in opposite orbitals, which we're allowed to do. And now we're going to look at the analogs of these three microstates where we just switch the spins around. So now we have one down and one up. We have one down. And one up, and I left out one at the bottom here. Let me slide this over. And we can put the final final version here. We have one down and then one up. So now we have all nine of the remaining microstates that we need. <clears throat> so for these particular states, Again, we want to tabulate the values of big M sub L and big M sub S for each of the individual microstates. One of the things we can just notice right away is in all these cases, we have one up and one down electron and such that you know, M sub S equals plus a half plus an M sub S equals minus a half gives us an overall value of zero. So they're all going to have M, big M sub S values of zero. We don't need to think about that anymore for the time being. So now let's look at the values of big M sub L. This is going to be a little interesting. So this particular case, we have two electrons that are both in an orbital with small M sub L of minus one. That gives us big M sub L of minus two. Here we have two electrons and they're both in M sub L equals zero. So that gives big M sub L equal to zero. In this orbital here, we have big small M sub L of plus one for two different electrons, so we add those together to get that big M sub L is equal to plus two. And we say it this way, we just add up, pick each electron, look at its M sub L value, add all of them up, and that'll give us our value of big M sub L. Here we have minus one and zero gives us minus one. Minus one plus one gives us zero. Zero and plus one gives us plus one. Minus one and zero is minus one. Minus one plus one is zero. Zero and plus one is plus one. And these are all zero for big M sub S. So now we've actually worked out all 15 of the microstates and we've tabulated the big sub L and big M sub S values for each of the microsteps. In the next step, 
we're going to make a comprehensive table of those values and we're going to show how we can use that table to actually work out what the spectroscopic term symbols actually are.